What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. We have a cool video for you here today. We're going to do some back to school source. I'm going to do some live source. I'm going to hop into my screen. And I'm going to kind of show you some different tactics along with different sorts of product ideas that you can start to implement into your sourcing as we approach prime back to school season, which most of August will be considered kind of back to school season along with kind of this later, you know, second half of July as kids, as teachers, as parents start to kind of focus towards that kind of going back to school threshold, right? So today's video, we're going to be doing some live sourcing, going to do a kind of a ride along sort of situation where I'm showing you exactly the sort of products that you should be on the hunt for and the sorts of ways you can be starting to kind of execute different sorts of tactics and strategies to find those sorts of products. So let's get into it. First and foremost, right, what I want to do is kind of give you and, you know, start to brainstorm sorts of the different sorts of products that are kind of considered back to school related products. At the top, we're going to start with the probably the most obvious one, which are kind of backpacks, right? And obviously, this is going to be across a lot of different brands, predominantly Nike. Man, if I could type, that'd be awesome. Adidas, Puma, Under Armour. You're also going to probably see a lot of duffel bags, right? Um, just, you know, winter clothing. So that's, you know, sweatshirts, sweatpants, um, you know, those sorts of things. Additionally, right, there's going to be a lot of kind of office supply related stuff, right? So Crayola is going to be a big one, both with, you know, crayons, markers, miscellaneous stuff, right? Ticonderoga is going to be another big brand for us to dig into. Calculators, right? There's going to be a lot of different... Not a lot, but different sorts of brands of calculators, right? So you have TI-84. You have TI-83. Within that, you have like the the CE. I think you have CE+. Plus. There's a color version, too. Uh, there's going to be the scientific calculators. Right, so those are going to be like the, the ones of a middle school, high school with, you know, they're, they're small, essentially doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, the, the basic functions, um, any sort of notebooks, maybe lunch boxes, and also think college-related stuff, college-related stuff. So, you know, around the dorm room focused. So that may include like, you know, hot pans that kids use to kind of warm up stuff in their dorm room, maybe any sort of bedding, um, accessories, accessories, I don't know how to spell accessories for a dorm, all those sorts of things. And so that's going to be kind of a good starting point. The cool thing is, right, once you start to kind of surround yourself with a lot of these sorts of ideas, these sorts of products, these niches, it allows you to kind of expand from there, right? You'll find sellers who are already selling these sorts of things and have sold these sorts of things in the past, and you can start to reverse source from the storefronts once you're kind of in the realm of back to school, right? And so we have sort of a different approach for a lot of this stuff, right? So for Crayola, for example, I can kind of use, we can do really KPF is going to be the, the driver there, Keeper Product Finder. We'll go through a couple of Keeper Product Finder searches to start to kind of familiarize ourselves with how to be sourcing for Crayola um, back to school. Backpacks, of course, we can use KPF as well as just like a manual source for a Nike. And I'll show you how their website is actually kind of set up to um, facilitate and create efficiencies around a lot of that stuff. This is going to be a lot of, you know, reverse sourcing from storefronts. Calculators, predominantly going to be Keep a Product Finder related, KPF, Ticonderoga, a lot of KPF, right? And so the reason why I say KPF on some and not others is, you know, for a lot of the brands or like niches or something like that, KPF is going to be huge. And I'll kind of show you, and we'll kind of start off there, right? So load up Keep a Product Finder. If we start with this, this Crayola one, right, right here, if we start here. 
obviously the biggest search, the macro level search is going to be that brand, that brand. So we come down here, we use the brand filter, we enter in Crayola. And just from that alone, we're going to have 9,500 products within the Crayola brand. Now, we know a couple things. First and foremost, we're, we haven't hit that peak back to school season yet. So we're not going to be want to be too restricted with our sales rank. Once we get into peak back to school, the sales rank is going to be like, you know, 50, 100, couple hundred, right? So we don't want to necessarily set a minimum or a maximum of call it 100 sales rank because we're going to really restrict ourselves based on what we see. So we're going to keep it very, you know, a very broad stroke. We'll say 15,000 as a maximum maximum trailing 30-day sales rank. That's going to essentially eliminate a lot of our uh, Crayola listings, and we're left with 300 products that our maximum sales rank of the past 30 days is, is 15,000. And again, the assumption there is a lot of these are going to go down to a couple hundred, less than 100, less than 50, but we're going to be able to filter those out pretty quickly. What we could also do is if you wanted to, right, we could potentially eliminate Amazon from the picture here, right? We cut our results in half. Um, and we could also come down here. Um, into our historical out of stock filter, which is 90 days out of stock percentage, OOS percentage, and we can eliminate Amazon from the past 30 day or past 90 days of the market as well. All right, so with those two filters in mind, we're down to about 100 Crayola products that are maximum of 15,000 and don't really have any Amazon in the picture. Now, from here, we can do a couple different things. First and foremost, right, we could start by going through one by one. And essentially reverse sourcing, right? So, you know, pull them up one by one. Find our buy cost. And then reverse map if it's profitable or if it's not based on the criteria, right? So whether we're shooting for a 15% margin, 20% margin, whatever that number is, we can essentially source our buy cost by the, from the entire internet, right? It looks like our buy cost here is about 99 cents from Staples, if that's the same thing, 12-pack. 12 pack, colored, colored. So it looks like those are about the same. A three pack here. So what is our buy cost? What did I just say? Three, $3.99. Yep, so our buy cost is about $3. And we're left with about you know a dollar profit, 15% margin. Now, so this is something that we'd probably want to FBM, which makes us even more profitable, right? So if we turn on FBM, shipping cost is probably going to be about, or actually it's more expensive, about $4. Where's my. So it doesn't actually make sense to FBM them, um, so we'd have to FBA, and of course we have about a dollar profit. Now, a couple things to note, right? Obviously, this is the current market. We don't necessarily expect the price to hold right throughout all of August, right? We'd expect some sort of, you know, premium as demand picks up, as back to school approaches, and so we can use the last year's season as a general indicator. Now, note we also have a lot more offers here. And so definitely be cautious in terms of stocking up on a lot of quantity just because we have some, you know, a really increased offer count to the market. Of course, the demand is going to go as well. So, you know, it's uh, it's going to be correlated in that regard. But also keep in mind that, you know, $11, $10 is sort of our ceiling for this sort of market. So if we bump this up to $10, well, we have a couple dollars profit. Maybe this is something, right? where we've identified that we want to be selling it over $9, $10, that sort of thing. Maybe we want to set up a tracking filter, right? So when Amazon is, or not when Amazon, when the buy box is over 10, we want to get an email that says, all right, this is something that I want to be selling now. Maybe we want to buy a couple hundred and hold until the price, if and when the price goes up to 10, that tracking filter can, uh, the tracking feature uh, can help us out in that capacity, right? This is also just one year. We can go back to a couple previous seasons and see what sort of situation we encounter. So it looks like two seasons ago, we saw the same sort of upwards building. We maxed out at like 12, potentially, um, if we encapsulate this entire season. right? So into August, we see about 9, 20, 9, 30s, of, you know, some glimpses over 10. Um, so we have seen that sort of thing two years in a row, right, 950 would still be pretty decently profitable for us, right? Keep in mind, this is a pack of three. Um, so obviously, keep that in mind that the picture doesn't necessarily match. Now, you'll notice this was a bundle, right? This was a pack of three that ended up being profitable. The one pack probably wouldn't be as profitable. And so maybe, right, 
And the other thing is the, the one packs, the two packs are going to be super cheap, right? So it does not as much room for profitability. So maybe you want to add an additional filter to your KPF search that says, okay, on top of all the filters that I'm using, I want to add very uh, add bundles to my criteria, right? So we can come down here. We can add, if I could find it. Count image, no, nope, not image count. A couple ways to do it. Um, so right here, pack. So we can select all, eliminate the one. Uh, and that may eliminate most of our, so that's just sourcing the title. So we're looking for the other filter. So I thought that was the case. So we get rid of that. Now it should be count of items. I can do control F. Item. There we go, number of items. So we can set a minimum of two. And so with this being said, we have 41 products that are essentially going to be a bundle, essentially creating our ceiling for profitability, creating our ceiling for, um, can I get this out of here? Uh, right here. creating our ceiling for profitability because there's just more meat on the bone, right? A one, a three pack um, can essentially be as equivalent or as profitable as a one pack, but there's just more buy cost, more profitability, more potential for, for profit. So something like this, right? Go and doing the same sort of methodology, same sort of reasoning. If we go back to last August, looks like right about here when the sales rank really hits, um, hits its max, about eight fifty eight dollars ish, right? And our buy cost I think is is fifty cents on these guys. Yep, so fifty cents. And so at eight fifty again sitting at about a dollar fifty, twenty percent margin. Really, really, really good stuff right here. Again, we can check out F FBM and see if there's more potential with that. Four dollars shipping, call it probably four fifty. Um, dollar twenty. So it's about equally profitable as long as these are first class shipping. Um, but the, the obviously the benefit with FBM is is we have some more flexibility. So we can potentially list on this listing along with two, three, four others. And so we can really try and scrape as much as we can off this product, really maximize our buy box potential because you know we're equally or, or simultaneously listed across three, four, five different listings. Again, this is something that Maybe we want to set a, a tracking alert that says, okay, I want to list when it gets above eight or when it gets above seven or something like that. Probably don't want to send these FBA just to be very cautious and very risk averse. You know, we can obviously spread our inventory across multiple listings. Um, but with that being said, there's definitely a lot of potential in these sorts of listings. Now, the other cool thing we can do is I already mentioned that we expect sales rank to continue to drop, demand to continue to increase as August approaches, right? And so this past year, we see the sales rank drop to be, you know, 30, 50, 60, something like that, right? So we can actually get a sense of the sort of velocity, sort of demand that we can expect. So two years ago, sales rank was about 50 again. Um, last year, of course, I already mentioned that it was about 50, right? Sales rank 50, 60, 70, something like that. So we have two years of evidence, essentially, that the sales rank is going to drop to about 50 to 60. We can use that. To, uh, to kind of forecast what we can expect for this year, right? So we are in Toys and Games. We can load up Jungle Scout, and as I wait for Jungle Scout to come up, we can load up Jungle Scout to have some sort of an idea in terms of what that 50 or 60 will mean for us this year, right? So we can use United States. Now we'll notice we're in Toys and Games, um, as the listing suggests. Toys and games. And so we can use an estimate uh, as 60 as kind of a baseline. And that means, you know, estimated number of sales is about 17,000, 16,000 in that range at its peak, right? So the, the velocity is going to be there. Point being, right, I'm not necessarily concerned, you know, about the 
you know, 86 offers, 90 offers, whatever it is. I, I'm not necessarily concerned with this sort of increasing offer count. Now, this is just simply seasonally related. If this was something that I'm buying in the normal scope of, of selling on Amazon, problem, right? But in something like this, when the demand is going to increase dramatically and the velocity, as we can see, is going to increase dramatically, there's just simply not going to be enough supply in the market for something like this, which is obviously why the, the price is going to go up and the opportunity increases as well. So those those are two different Crayola listings that you know have potential as we approach the next couple of weeks, the next month. Cool thing also, and I know I've pointed this out several times before, we can learn a bunch from this, right? So if we can go to data, buy box, buy box statistics, we can do a couple things. Filter on the past 365 days of the year. Filter on the max price. And so clearly, all these sellers were back to school sellers last year. Different size storefronts, of course, but maybe this BLB Midwest Supply LLC, 180 reviews on this product 10 months ago at $10, you know, very, very profitable around the same August last year. Maybe this is a storefront now we can use and leverage as we approach back to school this year, right? So we would expect and hope for and, and anticipate probably some other Crayola stuff in this storefront because they, they were on it last year, so the thought is they're probably going to be on similar stuff, you know, coming into this year. And so as we, you know, filter this storefront quickly, um, doing a brief skim, of course, this all, some of this inventory can be profitable. You can actually filter on toys and games. A lot of Lego Crayola right here. That's actually a new, uh, that's the same one. So nothing else. Crayola specifically. Let's go back to Industrial and Scientific. A lot of crest. So this is probably more wholesalish, so maybe not the best storefront to leverage. But we can come back here and kind of sift through some of these other storefronts just to get a sense of, I mean, you know, brainstorming the sorts of other products that are potentially available to us as we approach back to school, right? So lots of shoes in here. Um, again, not necessarily any other Crayola, but up, oh, bingo, bang, bang, bang. So we hit the jackpot here, right? Five, six, seven other Crayola listings that are now interesting, right? So now the one Crayola listing that we've opened, that we found now opens, opened us up to four, five, six, seven other different ones. And now also a backpack, right? Notice that was on our back to school list of potential interesting items. And so now you can easily see how it's going to start to compound here. As we just start, start to dig in, right? So last August, sales rank was down to 10,000, 12,000, 7,000, around there. Obviously, offer counts go up. Alpha counts really spiked here. So I don't know if in this particular listing we would have enough demand to kind of make up for that increased supply. But again, something to keep in mind, just another iteration, just another rep, just another interesting proposition of, of something to look into. All right, so that was Crayola. All right, so we'll kind of pivot, you know, back to our suggested product ideas for back to school. And now we can use the same sort of thing for backpacks, right? So we'll focus right here for right now. So we go back to back, keep a product finder. Let's close out some tabs here. And so keep in mind, we're sourcing for backpacks now. In this scenario, of course, we can go to Nike.com. Uh, they probably have so bags and backpacks, right? So you can manual source from here, which we definitely can do. Um, or you can just simply go to Amazon and type in backpacks to the search bar and, and come up with a bunch of potential there, which I could show you. Right, so maybe we want to type in Nike backpacks. Now there's going to be pages and pages of Nike-related backpacks that are, of course, we can start to filter and look on that, keep a chart in the bottom right, and start to see this, the sales rank drop. Those are the ones we're interested in, the price going up. Those, again, those are the ones that we're interested in. But using Keep It Product Finder is going to create a lot of efficiencies in this sort of thing. So we are here. We're going to actually scroll down to the text filter. And all we're going to do 
just type in backpack. That's essentially going to filter and source through the entire Amazon catalog looking for this keyword in the title. Right? So we can couple that with some of our favorite brands. So maybe we want to use Nike. Maybe we want to use Puma. Maybe we want to use Adidas. Helps if I spell it right. Um, under Armour. Right? So now we have a list of 9,000 products with backpack in the title inside these four brands. What we could also do is say, okay, I want a very conservative sales rank of about 50,000. Now we're down to 400 products. I want to avoid any sort of private label scenario, which I guess not in, this, in these brands we don't have to worry about. But maybe I want to say, okay, I want four FBA sellers minimum just to make sure it's a reseller-friendly listing. And now I have 63 listings that are, are very warm, very filtered, and I can start to hover over. Okay, maybe I want to also eliminate Amazon. So actually, I'm going to take this out. What I can also do is third-party buy box seller, 103 products. And so I could also couple that with taking out Amazon from the picture here. 65 products. So 65 listings that have a maximum sales rank of, I think, 50,000, have no Amazon in the picture, have a third-party buy box within Under Armour, Puma, Adidas, Nike. So again, it gives us a jumping-off point of these sorts of listings, right? You see last September in the bottom right hand of the screen, sales rank goes down, price goes up. Those are the sorts of listings that we're interested in. And we can filter all through these. Again, they all have the same sort of action. Um something like this, right? Sales rank really drops down, price goes up $60. And so these are the sorts of listings that I can start to dig into. All these Nike ones, bang, sales rank drops. Bang, sales rank drops. Sales rank drops. It happens every time, right? And so I'm going to start to make a list. I'm going to go into Seller Amp, all right? So I'll just pull up a random one. Maybe this one is one that I'm interested in. And I know my buy cost is going to be around 30 or around 20 or 15 or whatever the case may be. I know, based on the past year, right, that this sort of action is going to happen and this sort of price speak, spike is going to happen. So, again, the tracking alert is going to be huge and say, okay, once this gets over 50, once this gets over 60, 70, whatever the case may be, I can list it FBA and it's game on from there. And so back to school sourcing is going to be a lot of all this that we're doing identifying potential opportunities, and then once that scenario happens, game on. We want to list an FBM, send it an FBA, whatever the case may be, and act really quick. We don't want to necessarily, especially if this is your first back to school, I would not suggest to go too, too deep, too early, right? Stock in and send a whole bunch to FBA because, God forbid, something, you know, the offer count goes to the roof. Maybe something gets really um, looped out. We don't want to be stuck with 300 units in FBA, that be half your business equity and the, it's not even profitable, right? So we want to avoid that at all costs. That's why I'm saying just start to stockpile a bunch of potential opportunities and then with the, cap, with the help of the keep a tracking alerts, we can uh, monitor a lot of these scenarios and then act when the, when the going gets hot, right? When the opportunity presents itself, bang, we can list FBM and start to sell through our inventory really, really quick, right? So that's going to be it, guys. A lot of iteration, a lot of practice. You'll start to really kind of compile a list of you know, 50, 100, 200 back-to-school potential items that you can start to look for year after year after year after year after year. Right? So thanks for joining me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Leave a comment in the video description. If you did, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.